It's wonderful to see you all. Welcome to the 2017 Faculty and Staff Convocation. I'm Margaret Everett, Interim Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs. I'm still getting used to that title two weeks in. Uh, welcome back. It's great to see everyone. I'm sure we have a wonderful year ahead. Um, I wanted to let you all know that we are recording the uh, event in the back of the room, just so that you're aware. I almost said videotaping, but that's horribly out of date. It's funny, I read a lot of, uh, wow, I, that just took my breath away, sorry. Um, I read a lot of uh, philosophy of music uh, by Theodore Adorno, and he always says one of his refrains in all his work is that uh, music is a, a cry for reconciliation and a dream of a utopian world. Um, Stunt. So thank you, <laughs> obviously, Portland uh, Choir, Portland State University Choir, for their beautiful work. Um, and also Nietzsche's famous line, without music, life would be a mistake. <laughs> my name is Michael Clark, and I'll gather myself now. I guess I just, that really got me. <laughs> I'm serving as the presiding officer of PSU's Faculty Senate this year along with many dedicated folk on the Senate Steering Committee and along with many other faculty who serve on the Senate and on our many Senate committees, we strive to make PSU the best academic and cultural center imaginable. To all my Senate colleagues, I offer my thanks for your commitment to PSU and for your kind support of my endeavors this year. I would be remiss if I didn't mention the incredible work of our recent Senate presiding officer and officers, Brad Hansen, who is here today and is a professor of music, so I think he's probably equally amazed. Um, Gina Greco, former presiding officer, and Bob Liebman, there's many others, I can't mention them all. I also wanna thank Secretary of the Faculty, Richard Byler, who toils tirelessly to make the Senate run like a well-oiled machine or at least like a really cool machine. Sometimes we don't know. He does tremendous work. All of these colleagues, including our primary constituency, our students represented by our student government and by ASPSU have worked hard to sustain and fulfill PSU's long tradition of shared governance where everyone works together for the good of our students and our institution. There's two other people I have to mention. Um, that have worked so hard for students and faculty. Dr. Shelley Shabong uh, and our uh, AAUP director, Phil Lesh, who hammered out important new agreements for PSC over the past years, including methods for recognizing the central role of our non-tenure track faculty members and for recognizing faculty achievement with our new post-tenure review process. Again, Phil and Shelley are embodiments of our commitment to shared governance and the centrality of faculty in our educational mission. Um, you know, I, again, a person that comes to mind here is John Dewey, the philosopher, philosopher, American philosopher, but also philosopher of education. Education is not preparation for life. Education is life itself. So let me welcome you all, our faculty, academic professionals, full-time, part-time faculty, advisors, staff members, deans, vice provosts, the staff at Portland State University Foundation, our AAUP and AFT representatives, our city partners, everyone that's a member of the PSU family, along with their friends and anyone else that wants to be part of our open and diverse community. PSU welcomes you all and will always welcome you. I want to extend thanks as well and appreciation to Provost Margaret Everett, Everett, who has stepped up at this important moment to take on about seven new jobs as well as the ones she does in the past. And finally, my last thank you of the day in this sense, I want to offer a warm, special welcome to our new president, Professor Ramat Shureshi. We're thrilled to have you here. So one more little comment. Why are we here today? What indeed is a convocation? At its most basic level, a convocation is a gathering or assembly usually invoked in political or ecclesiastical settings. It's a call for, which you're not gonna hear from me. <laughs> Those days, uh, never mind, no joke. <laughs> it's a call for a community to convene for business. It's a call for people to come together in celebration of shared interests. Over the years, the term has become a trademark for university life, usually involving opening day ceremonies, for new students or an event like today, and later, graduation for those same students. Still, 
there's one more element of the term that has perhaps been submerged with time and use. To convoke, again, is to bring together. The term has its roots in Old and Middle French, convocation et convoquer, but even more importantly in the Latin com, meaning roughly together, and vocare, to call, to in invoking the notion of vox or voice. Okay, Clark, where are you going with this? <laughs> because we're not just here together, we're calling out. We're calling out to our colleagues, to our friends, to our university family, to our diverse communities, to our city, and to our region. When we call, we are always asking for a response. We're asking for conversation, for engagement, and for the proper recognition that human integrity always desires. It's really nice to be part of that call today. Thank you. Good afternoon. I wasn't sure if I'm going to make it on time, and so we had discussed alternatives <laughs> uh, because of, uh, I wasn't sure about the traffic. Uh, I had the pleasure of meeting the CEO of Columbia uh, Sportswear this afternoon. And uh, uh, Dr. Bill Bolt promised that he will get me there on time and he will bring me here on time. All of those worked, and I did not quite get wet either. So, <laughs> I want to thank our internationally renowned uh, choir. They really rock. <laughs> and. These are our students. You make us proud, and we are proud of you. <laughs> the beautiful image of the eclipse that you see on the screens next to me are taken by our students, the ones who partner with NASA. Those students also make us very proud. A solar eclipse seems rare because we almost never get to see it. But somehow, the solar system aligns the sun, the earth, and the moon to create this show once every 18 months. And I think our faculty, staff, students, and community have fallen into their own alignment, one that will allow us to build an exciting future for PSU. Those who witness the moment of totality often describe it as a transformational experience. I want to tell you, everyone in this room contributes to something that is just as transformational. Because to give and to get education is a transformational experience. And I want to congratulate you all because as you begin the new academic year, you are beginning another transformational phase. Every year, faculty, with the support of our staff, educate and inspire more than 28,000 PSU students. You help them reach their goals, their potential. You help them see the world. You support our students in countless ways, both inside and outside of the classroom. One big way you support our students is by attending their games. Last Saturday, 
I attended the Vikings home opener game against UC Davis. Forget about the score. <laughs> <laughs> I was really great to see them playing and cheer them on. And I'm looking forward to watching a volleyball match soon. Guess what? Our volleyball team, for those new to PSU like me, we only have one volleyball team, and that's our women volleyball team. They have a 9-3 record heading to the league play. I'm proud of them. Our student athletes excel both in the field and outside of the field. Did you know that the graduation rate for PSU student athletes is 24% point higher than the rest of our students? Did you know that last year our student athletes had a combined GPA of 3.13? Did you know that our Vikings are among the best ambassadors for PSU? They are well respected by our alumni, by our community. Even though the classes were not yet in session last Saturday, almost 75% of the Providence Stadium was full by the community. I was so impressed. And I saw the excitement that the community has about PSU. They are the pride of us. They really bring pride to the rest of the students. So I want to make sure that we all support them. We attend their games cheer and make sure they understand that they have our support and we are proud of them. They would greatly appreciate it. So as I'm planning to attend as many of the games as I can, I hope you make that a priority for yourself and also encourage your students to go and cheer on for their student colleagues and classmates. Oh, by the way, just in case, my name is Ramad Shureshi. <laughs> I'm your new president. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But in my heart, I'm a still a faculty. But today, I'm not going to be a faculty because I'm not planning to speak for 55 minutes. <laughs> Before I say anything else, though, I want to say thank you. Thank you for welcoming me and my wife to this great university and to this great city. I want especially to thank our three special students that during the first day that I started my job at PSU, they gave me such a great treat. Marwa, Kennedy, and Rena, they were great ambassadors. And I have to say, in those few hours, I learned so much from those three, including how to buy a ticket to get on a streetcar. <laughs> because I do use the streetcar to go between the campus and the apartment we have rented. I want to thank President Weevil for his nine years of leadership at PSU. He leaves us a legacy of more student diversity, more modern campus, and so many things to cheer about. So please join me to thank Ben.
I also want you to join me to welcome the brave Professor Margaret Everett. <laughs> You know, I have really been blessed by having a, the best executive team, from deans to vice president to vice provost. We have the best. Their dedication, their knowledge, their care really goes beyond the call of duty. So please join me to thank all of them. As you may know, we are beginning to conduct two national searches, one for the permanent provost, the other is for the vice president for research. As you will hear during my talk today, research is very important. And I want to make sure we get the right person for that position. But I will be the same way that I did uh, get input from others. I'm doing the same thing, and very soon we will be uh, announcing an interim vice president of research who would start immediately for this year while we are conducting the permanent search. I'm sure you are curious about the enrollment numbers for this fall. Enrollment, retention, graduation rates, they are high priority for me. And I want to work with all of you to make sure that we achieve the best in all of those three areas. But keep in mind, we always ask from our students, are you ready for PSU? But maybe it's time for us to ask the question, is PSU ready for a student? Are you ready? They are moving in tomorrow. <laughs> in fact, I'm planning to go and help them with the moving to welcome the families and the students. Would welcome you if you want to join me. I'm pleased to report that for fall 2017, PSU's new enrollment will very likely show a 15% increase in freshmen and a 6% increase in transfers. This is a huge achievement. <laughs> Our biggest increase is among Oregon freshmen. We may see a 25% or over 300 more Oregon freshmen than last fall. Better visibility and outreach have caused applications for Honors College to double this year. Honors College enrollment is up by 20%. And I'm delighted to share with you that 48% of freshman honors are students of color, which is important to PSU. It's another achievement of PSU, but I want to take a minute to thank John and his team for their effort in the admissions and enrollment management for the recruitment effort that they have done. We are grateful to you and your team, John. Most importantly, I want to say thank you to the faculty and the staff for everything that you do every day for our students, for our institutions, for our city. Today, we will be talking about transformational experience and the experiences that we all go through for our students, for ourselves, and for our university. My transformational story begins back in 1981 when I was a green 
assistant professor. This is only a couple of years ago, by the way. <laughs> and I was at another great urban university, Wayne State University in Detroit, Michigan. Back then, I was uh, still repaying my student loans. This is something I know we all remember. I was uh, still finding my way around an academic. I'm sure we all know and appreciate how difficult it is to command a room full of 20-year-old students, especially now that they have iPhones, iPads, and sometimes I wonder, are they listening to the lectures or playing with their iPhones? So, as an assistant professor, I had that daunting task. Thank God there were no iPhones. <laughs> and we also appreciate all of the teaching we have to do, worrying about research that we have to do, worrying about all of the academic life, and all of those wonderful committees that we get appointed to, nominated to, whether we want it or not, but we got to serve. In 1981, I taught a 21-year-old undergraduate student named Kevin McLaughlin. Kevin and I were very different. Kevin was the grandson of Irish immigrants, the only son in a family with seven daughters. His father worked for Ford Motor Company, and Kevin grew up in the suburb of Detroit called Dearborn. When we met, Kevin was uh, still finding his way around. He had just recently changed major. You know those freshmen, how many times they think about changing majors? He was paying for college by working long hours every week, waiting on tables. It was my job to light Kevin up, I call it brainwashing, about engineering. I think I did a good job because Kevin took my automatic control class. For those of you who may not be quite familiar with automatic control, I'd be happy to explain it as my gift today to you during the reception. learning about these aspects of engineering and assisting me with my research really led up Kevin. And two years later, when I moved to Purdue University, I asked Kevin, how would you like to come and be my first graduate student? And by the way, I will give you graduate assistantship. He was excited because I offered him this lofty $550 a month. <laughs> but he was happy. In fact, he was thrilled, because he was going to get a great education, do research, and don't need to go and wait on tables anymore. Together, Kevin and I published six articles, and to this day, those papers are still being referenced. If you are interested to know the topic, we'll discuss it during reception. <laughs> <laughs> but right now, I want you to take a second and picture a student who is your Kevin. Someone who is very different from you, the way Kevin was different from me. The student you are imagining could be someone you taught a long time ago or just last quarter. Think of someone you know who was transformed by education 
and collaboration. Think of someone whose life you changed. You have got that? Hold that picture in your mind. We'll come back to it. There are many ways that faculty, research, scholarship, and creative work play critical roles in engaging, retaining, and transforming our students. Because it is an access institution, PSU does transform students more than any other Oregon institution. I'm spending the first few months of my presidency learning about PSU, about PSU culture, and about the city of Portland. I have passed two tests of being a Portlander. I got my hoodie thanks to the three students the first day, and I actually used it the last couple of days. And I got on the bike after almost 20 years and did a 12-mile bike ride with the leaders. <laughs> with the leadership of the city, it was educational. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I got to tell you, I was planning to come here inside the hall with the bike, but then it was raining too hard, so I'm not that yet Portlander. <laughs> I'm spending these few months to really learn about you, about PSU, about Portland, about Oregon. I have learned that Portland State educates more Pell Grant eligible students, more first generation students, more students of color, and more women than any other university in Oregon. We also prepare more graduate students each year than any other Oregon university. Many PSU students are juggling family obligations. Many are working their way through a school just like Kevin was. We are Oregon's most affordable public research university. Just look at these statistics. Saving $2,000 a year makes a huge difference to our PSU students because of the students we have. Thankfully, the Oregon legislators and Governor Kate Brown have made investments to higher education that are allowing us to keep tuition increases low this year. I hope to see the same contributions in the future years. Thank you to those of you especially who advocated for the investment of a state in higher education. I cannot thank you enough. <laughs> PSU is also doing its share in terms of investing in affordability. We launched a four years free program last year. We have committed to high achieving first time Oregon freshmen that we will fill the financial gap between their federal and a state support and our tuition. As long as they maintain the required grade point average, they will receive that funding and therefore they will be able to complete their four year at PSU without paying any tuition. We initially offered the four years free program to 1,100 students. That's that many applications that came through. Just over 600 of these students finalized their admission requirements and maintained eligibility for the program. I'm pleased to share with you that as of this week, almost 500 of those have registered to join us this fall 
I'm proud of having them here. Many of Oregon's largest employers, Intel, OHSU, PGE, Nike, Columbia, we were just talking with the Columbia CEOs and how pleased he is with the graduates of PAU. They are all choosing our alumni, our graduates, over graduates of other universities. And our graduates go on to earn comfortable salaries. No other Oregon university can match PSU's value proposition. But we gotta be cognizant of the competition. We have to work to maintain this high value of our degree. Otherwise, competition will pass us. Today, the deans and I will be highlighting the excellent research scholarship and creative works of PSU's faculty. Because that is the launch pad from which the university will ascend. Ascend is the acronym I want you all to keep in mind as we continue to elevate PSU to greater heights. Many of you are already leaders in your field, widely published, internationally recognized, and conducting innovative research and creative work. And I'm grateful for all of your effort. In English, Dr. Paul Collins, a Guggenheim Fellowship recipient, has written nine books that have appeared in 10 languages. This is a huge accomplishment. Dr. Jun Zhao, a professor of mechanical materials, engineering, and physics, was honored by the United States Presidential Award and National Science Foundation Career Award. There are so few, especially female engineering faculty, that receive this honor. So, Joan, I'm grateful to you. I know I saw you earlier today. We are delighted to have you. I was delighted to learn that we have two current career awardees at PSU. They are Dr. Dara Schifferer, I hope I'm saying your name right, Assistant Professor of Sociology, and Dr. Stephen Ann Talk, Assistant Professor of Civil and Environmental Engineering. Please join me to congratulate them. I'm also very proud of our School of Social Work, which is number one in the country in social work research as conducted by NSF. And the College of Urban and Public Affairs, Dr. Jennifer Dill, is winning highly competitive grants and directing Transportation Research and Education Center. Berkeley and Minnesota lost their transportation grant. PSU won another five years of that grant. This is huge again. I'm grateful to all of your effort. So as you can see, we have many success stories to talk about, to highlight, and to celebrate. Just last year, PSU attracted over $50 million of research, external research funding. And I hope by really working on hiring a VP of research and better organizing our research office, we will be able to, not in too distant of future, double that external grant volume. Research, scholarship, creative work, and service form the bedrock of our university. Ramping up research and creative works will elevate PSU's national reputation. In the academic world, we are still a young university. We don't have a century behind us. 
but it's the beauty of PSU because that means we are flexible and we are able to address the challenges of today. We don't have those huge anchors. We are able to address today's challenges. Based on my past experience, I believe firmly that cross-disciplinary research is essential to elevating our national reputation. I hope to introduce Faculty Innovation Awards very soon. We are going to invest in that starting this year. We are going to invest and we will be seeking innovative proposals from our faculty. And I'm looking forward to receiving many cross-disciplinary innovative proposals. I'm urging all of you to find more ways to collaborate across disciplines, <coughs> to find new ways to combine your expertise with others, to conduct groundbreaking research and discovery. A great example that we already have of this type comes from Dr. Corey Griffin from College of the Arts and Dr. Peter Dusika from Massey College of Engineering and Computer Science. They are promoting the use of sustainable wood high-rise buildings that can withstand earthquake. Can you imagine how many lives could have been saved in the Mexico earthquake if this research outcome was already out there into the hands of society. That's the impact of research that I'm talking about. To be successful, PSU must also expand its partnership with business community, with Portland, with local, state, government agencies, with other institutions. Nobody said we can do it all by ourselves, including international universities. One of my goals is to enable every student of PSU to have a study abroad experience. It is that experience that changes their perspective, opens their mind. Our faculty should also have opportunities to engage in research, creative work outside of Oregon and outside of United States. We're going to work on establishing those relationships to provide those opportunities for you. We have fine institutional partners locally. I'm so proud of the OHSU, PSU, a School of Health, Public Health. This is the partnership that is really unique. And I know that there are a number of faculty from OHSU and PSU that are collaborating together. As I learn about PSU, I'm finding out about what makes us unique and asking how we can establish more partnerships like the one we have done through the School of Public Health. I envision launching centers of excellence that will help us build high-quality programs, attract high-quality students, and build our reputation and national ranking. These are the honors that I want to celebrate. These are your honors. You earned it for the third year in a row. PSU has been selected as one of the top 10 most innovative universities in the nation. It's in the company of MIT, Harvard, Duke. No other public university in the western part of the country has achieved this distinguished recognition. I'm proud of you for achieving that, and I want to thank you.
these are what you have done, and they demonstrate your creativity, your willingness to collaborate on behalf of our students. PSU is at its best when we team up with each other, with other institutions, with civic partners, with alumni, with businesses. It is through such collaborations that we are able to offer our students rich experiential learning opportunities. We have many examples of these partnerships, including the students and faculty who have designed houses for homeless women in our community. Talk about letting knowledge serve the city. It is vital that we continue to reach out to business and industry. I have been asking our business community for their support to expand our internship programs. Our business partners are always forecasting what is next for their industry and our economy. We need to ask them about the type of graduate they would like to hire five years and 10 years from now so that we align our educational programs with the needs of the community. The worst thing is to graduate students who cannot find jobs. That's why this alignment is so important. We have, as I said, many examples of collaborations. You will see these pictures. The Collaborative Life Sciences Building, where our partners included OHSU, OSU, the state of Oregon, TriMet, and many generous donors. The Carl Miller Center, which opened yesterday, where our funding partners included the state of Oregon, Rick and Erica Miller, and many more private donors and alumni. Viking Pavilion, where our funding partners include OHSU, the state of Oregon, private donors, alumni, and our students. <coughs> Newberger Hall, where our founding partners include the state of Oregon, alumnus Fari Bors Massey, and philanthropic and philanthropist uh, Jordan Schnitzer. The Fort and Montgomery Building, where our partners include OHSU, Portland Community College, and the city of Portland. These beautiful buildings are testament to what PSU can do when it collaborates with other institutions, the businesses, and engages its alumni and friends. Along with investing in infrastructure, we must invest in our expertise. We must invest in our faculty. Talented faculty are magnets for attracting other talented faculty and top quality students. They help us draw research funding and elevate our reputation. It is the faculty's innovative ideas that will make us Oregon's destination university. I'm proud of you. I want to work with you to make PSU the Oregon Destination University. Our partners and Portland State Foundation understood this when they began raising funds to support Portland professorships. These named professorships run for five years. Our first two are Barry Stoll professorship for the director of our choral activities, no other one except our own Ethan Esperi. Congratulations, Ethan. <laughs> the second one is the Volum Professor of Voice awarded to Christine Meadows. Congratulations, Christine. <laughs> we 
We want to expand on these fundraising efforts and ultimately support permanently endowed professorships. My goal is for every school to have at least one permanent endowed chair professor. Becoming Oregon's destination university will take significant resources. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the staff of the PSU Foundation, especially President and CEO, Dr. Bill Bolt, for securing funds for our capital projects as well as our endowed professorships. PSU and PSU Foundation are working together on a plan to announce the public phase of a major capital campaign. Our goal is $300 million. Like I said, I'm a, in a learning and listening phase right now, and I want to hear from as many of you as possible. I will be holding listening sessions and, of course, ice cream socials. <laughs> we are planning three ice cream socials. And I have been told that there will be pistachio ice cream as among those. <laughs> we're going to have it with faculty, we're going to have it with the staff, and we're going to have one with the students. My days right now start before 6 a.m. I felt so bad this morning sending email to Margaret around 4 a.m. <laughs> and usually ends by the time I get on the streetcar. I know, know when the which one starts first in the morning and which one lasts in the evening. It's usually I get home after 9 p.m. Don't talk to my wife. <laughs> It's a good thing that she's uh, still busy with unpacking. <laughs> when things settle down, I plan to hold open door office hours. Given my schedule, most likely it's going to start in November. I'm going to have one day just for you to come, sit, talk with me, share your ideas, your plans. If you want to complain, you got good pair of ears. I will be asking you about your dreams for the university and our students. Please don't tell me what you think I want to hear. Tell me what I need to hear. You are the heart of the university. You see our students every day. You know their struggles and successes. You know what we need to do to serve them well. That's why I want to hear from you. Remember that image? Going back to Kevin and your Kevin. That Kevin, he went on to work on satellite systems in the aerospace industry. Later, he became an executive in automotive industry back in Detroit. About 10 years after he graduated, I'm trying to control my emotion. To this day, it's still emotional. He sent me a letter. And he said, in my life, besides my parents, you were the most influential person. That's what I call transformation. He was transformed by the education he got. I was transformed by Kevin. You all have a students like Kevin. They are why we are here, why we are at PSU. Not only do you transform our students, 
you transform PSU. You will make PSU the destination university for all the students, especially Oregon students. With that, I want to thank you. I look forward to working with you. And welcome for starting the new academic year. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to turn the podium to Professor Margaret Everett. Shereshi, it is an honor to work with you, and we're glad that you're here. Boy, that's a, a tough act to follow. Um, so it's uh, my pleasure to welcome our new faculty and staff to campus and to acknowledge the faculty and staff who have received promotion and tenure in the last year. It was really a pleasure to have lunch with our new faculty and to welcome them to campus. And I was really so honored to hear their stories about why they chose PSU. And I know that they are going to contribute fantastic things to our campus in the months and years to come. So a special welcome to them. Um, I would like to, um, excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, can I ask all of our new faculty and staff to stand so that we can recognize you? I'd miss something when I read new, fat, new employees stand for applause. <laughs> Catching up here. Uh, many of our new faculty are wearing PSU lanyards and name tags, so especially at the reception, please make a point of uh, introducing yourselves and welcoming them to our community. We have had a successful promotion and tenure cycle. 26 faculty were promoted to associate professor with indefinite tenure. Another two faculty were awarded tenure only, and there were 62 faculty who were promoted into other ranks, including 23 to emeritus. Our website has a listing of those names under news, events, and awards. I invite those faculty who have received promotion or award of tenure, effective 2017-2018, to stand for applause. You are all part of a rich tradition of academic privilege and freedom where we encourage a multiplicity of viewpoints and positions. And thus ends my unsubtle but heartfelt reference to academic freedom, which is, and all the rights and responsibilities that go along with it, which is a timely subject. <laughs> with that, it's really a pleasure to turn our program over to the acknowledgement of our faculty and staff who have received awards in the last year. And we will start with Dean Karen Marangel from the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences to share those accomplishments with you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. At Convocation, we recognize the recipients of the Excellence Awards for faculty and staff. All the awards come with honoraria and the high recognition of their colleagues. As Dean of the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, I am pleased to announce the Research Ex Excellence Awards award recipients from the college. The Junior Faculty Research Excellence Award was established to recognize the importance to the mission of the university of creating and communicating knowledge. 
The purpose of the award is to acknowledge assistant or associate professor rank faculty contributions to their field, originality of thought, and career productivity. The recipient of the 2017 Junior Faculty Research Award is Professor Paul Loikeith, Assistant Professor in the Department of Geography. Let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> Professor Loikeith holds a PhD in Atmospheric Science from Rutgers University and is rapidly establishing an international reputation with his research, which focuses on the intersection of weather and climate, a very timely topic for us these days. In particular, Professor Lloyd Heath is interested in understanding the dynamic and thermodynamic mechanisms that drive extreme temperature and precipitation events and applying this understanding to evaluate climate models in order to better understand projections of future climate. He has published in highly influential papers, he has published his highly influential papers in prestigious climate science journals, including geophysical research letters. Professor Lloyd Keith also contributes to community research projects, working with fellow faculty and in partnership with the city of Portland and the Clackamas River Water Providence providers. He has presented his work in major professional societies, such as the American Geophysical Union, American Meteorologi Meteorological Society, and the American Association of Geographers, and has led international workshops. He has received major grants from the US National Science Foundation and NASA, totaling over $1 million to date. Professor Lloyd Keith consistently provides his students with exciting opportunities for instruction and collaboration, including presenting at professional meetings and authorship of papers. For his overall excellence as a researcher and member of the PSU faculty, please join me in congratulating Paul Lloyd Keith. Paul, please stand to be acknowledged. Faculty Research Excellent Award was established to recognize the importance to the mission of the university of creating and communicating knowledge. The purpose of the award is to acknowledge professor rank faculty contributions to their field, originality of thought, and career productivity. The recipient of the 2017 Senior Faculty Research Excellent Award is Niles Lehman, Professor of Chemistry. Professor Lehman earned his PhD in biology at the University of California, Los Angeles. He leads the internationally renowned Lehman Lab, part of PSU Center for Life and Extreme Environments. There, he and his team investigate the biochemical and genetic processes that drove the origins of life on Earth some four billion years ago and still drive the evolution of organisms today. He is perhaps the first classically trained evolutionary biologist to work with systems of catalytic RNA evolution a distinction which, combined with the high caliber of his work, puts him at the cutting edge of a large and growing field. His research has garnered significant support from distinguished sources such as NASA, the National Science Foundation, and the Templeton Foundation. Professor Lehman has offered, authored 70, 67 peer-reviewed research articles and 26 other reviews, book chapters, commentaries, and editorials. His groundbreaking work has been published in such esteemed scientific journals such as Nature and the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. He has served on the editorial boards of the journals Astrobiology and Trends in Evolutionary Biology and is now editor-in-chief of the Journal of Molecular Evolution as well as editor-in-chief of the Chemistry Section of Life. Professor Lehman is an outstanding member of PSU's teaching faculty he has twice won the John Elliott Allen Teaching Award for his classroom instruction in general chemistry, prebiotic chemistry, advanced biochemistry, and his general course on the origins of life on Earth. Niles is unable to attend convocation today, but for his accomplishments and overall excellence as a researcher and member of the PSU faculty, please join me in congratulating Niles.
It is now my pleasure to introduce Dean Leroy Bynum of the College of the Arts. He will pre be, pre be presenting the Research Faculty Excellence Award. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Leroy Bynum, uh, the new dean for the college, the outstanding College of the Arts, and I am so thrilled to be here at Portland State University. The Research Faculty Excellence Award was established to recognize the importance to the mission of the university of creating and communicating knowledge. The purpose of the award is to acknowledge faculty contributions to their field, originality of thought, and career productivity. The recipient of the 2017 Research Faculty Excellence Award is Kristen Hole, Professor, Theater and Film, College of the Arts. Christine holds a PhD in Cultural Studies from Stony Brook University and has served Portland State University since joining its faculty in December 2015. In her relatively brief time at Portland State's film program, Professor Hoke has, Hole has elevated the program's research profile through her own publications and through her activity with research from other faculty in the program. Professor Hole's dedication to research and writing and to integrating both in her faculty role has been exemplary, both for her colleagues and her students, who benefit from her research work in the courses she teaches on new German cinema and feminist film theory. She has already published several peer-reviewed essays in, in journals and collections, extremely representative of the high productivity for a tenure-track faculty member at her stage. In the last year, she published a monograph towards a feminist cinematic, cinematic ethics. Claire Dennis, Emmanuel Levinas, and Jean-Luc Nancy, with well-respected Edinburgh University Press. And she co-edited The Routledge Companion to Cinema and Gender, published by the equally well-respected Routledge Press. She has also co-written a textbook, Film Feminisms, a Global Introduction to be published in 2018 through Rutledge Press. She has written several reviews and presented at numerous conferences in the course of her career. Professor Hole has shown herself to be an important mentor to PSU students, particularly women considering PhD programs. For her research contributions to the university, and her service to students. Please join me in congratulating and welcoming Kristen Hole to the stage to say a few words. You gotta stay, you gotta, right? And Kristen Hole is not gonna come to the stage. So we're just gonna congratulate you and leave it there. Congratulations, Kristen. <laughs> you get to see a lot of me. This. I work with a lot of faculty. Um, it's my pleasure now um, to, uh, to introduce the uh, recipients of the PSU Foundation Philanthropic Awards. The PSU Foundation created the Faculty Cultivation Award 
in 2014 to recognize outstanding faculty for their role as a partner in cultivating philanthropic support for priority programs within their units. And I would like to thank and recognize um, President and CEO Bill Bolt of the PSU Foundation um, and thank him for his continued support of this award and this recognition for our faculty. So thank you, Bill. We have two awards. The first is the uh, Faculty Cultivation Award, and the recipient of the 2017 PSU Foundation Faculty Cultivation Award is Ken Stedman, Professor of Biology. During his 16 years with the university, Ken has been prolific in his outreach to alumni, donors, research partners, and the community. And for those of you who know Ken, know he is incredibly enthusiastic about biology. He has embraced the role of the Research and Development Committee in the Department of Biology with vigor and actively works with the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences Development Office to fully engage alumni and donors and cultivate them for current and future gifts to the department. He has done a masterful job of stewarding many of the department's top philanthropic partners, ensuring a successful experience not only for the benefactors, but also for the recipients of our donors' generosity. Professor Stedman clearly understands the importance and impact of maintaining open, direct, and thoughtful communication to the university's philanthropic partners and goes above and beyond to leave a positive, lasting impression of PSU and the biology department. Ken is unable to attend convoc convocation today, but for his tireless commitment to philanthropy, please join me in congratulating Professor Ken Stedman. The second award is the PSU Foundation Faculty Leadership Award. Uh, again, this award was established in 2014 to recognize outstanding faculty for their work as a direct partner in obtaining a significant philanthropic gift. The recipient of the 2017 PSU Foundation Philanthropic Leadership Award is Tim Garrison, professor and chair of the Department of History. Professor Garrison has made fundraising a priority during his time as chair and he truly understands the role philanthropy plays in strengthening the department. He is genuine, has a great sense of humor, and has a way with people that puts them at ease and makes them feel special. He is always willing to strategize with development staff about cultivation of ideas for donors. Despite all that he is juggling as a department chair, and as a practicing historian, his new book just came out, Professor Garrison makes himself available for donor visits and works to develop prospects within the community. The most notable demonstration of Professor Garrison's devotion to philanthropy is his work with the Friends of History Board of Directors. The board was developed many years ago as a way to build support for the history department, but had become virtually inactive by 2012, when Professor Garrison recruited Lou Livingston to serve as the new president. Together, they revitalized the board rewrote the bylaws, and began recruiting board members. Since then, the Friends of History board has become a key factor in the success of the History Department's fundraising efforts. Funds raised from the Friends of History are used to sponsor public lectures with renowned historians from around the world, support faculty and student research, and honor student achievements. For his commitment to philanthropy, both in his department and for Portland State, Please join me in congratulating Tim Garrison. Tim, please stand to be acknowledged. And now I would like to invite up to the podium Dean Ren Su of the Col Massey College of Engineering and Computer Science. <laughs> I'm Ren Su, Dean of the College of Engineering and Computer Science, which is also known as MCAX, and I will use MCAX from now on. Uh, I'm pleased to introduce the MCAX recipients of the Historical Excellence Awards, named after past leaders in the Division of Academic Affairs. The Brand Furt Price Millar Award is given annually to a faculty member on tenure track or tenured who has demonstrated excellence in scholarship, instruction, university service, and public service, and whose performance in scholarship and research is judged exceptional. 
The recipient of the 2017 Brentford Prize and Law Award is Professor Hamid Markani, Professor of Civil Engineering, Civil and Environmental Engineering. We're asking him to come up later. Uh, let me tell you about uh, Professor Hamid Markani. Uh, Professor Mor Hamid Markani directs the Remote Sensing and the Water Resources Lab in Civil and Environmental Engineering and is a fellow of the Institute for Sustainable Solutions. He has made significant contributions on tackling the grand challenges faced by water resource planners stakeholders and emergency managers here and around the world. And the challenge is this, how to make sure there is enough water to meet the demands and protect the livelihoods and the properties against extreme events as populations grow and the weather patterns shift due to climate variability and change. Since joining PSU, he has developed a research program that is regionally, nationally, and internationally significant and advances the mission of Portland State. Professor Mark Connie has more than 130 publications and is a highly cited author. He is a pioneer in stochastic modeling, data assimilation, cyber innovation, and uncertainty quantification methods used extensively in the engineering, earth science, and many other disciplines worldwide. In recognizing his outstanding works and significant contributions, he was elected to the Hall of Fame of Samueli College of Engineering at the University of California, Irvine. He has chaired many technical committees, panels, conferences, and workshops, and served on several advisory panels related to drought, flood, climate change, and water policy issues. Professor Marconi has been on the editorial boards of journals such as AGU, American Geophysical uh, Union, Water Resources Research, Elsevier Journal of Hydrology, and American Society of Civil Engineering Journal of Hydrology, Hydrologic Engineering, among others. For his continued service and contributions to the university, please join me congratulating and welcome Amit Morikani to come to the stage. Thank you, um, Dean Sue, for the citation. And um, I'm um, <clears throat> deeply honored to be named the recipient of the 2017 uh, Branford Price Miller Award. Um, for sure, to be named for such an honor, one must be nominated for consideration. I'm grateful to uh, Professor Dacian Sue. I don't know if he's around here. Um, um, who has um, been leading my uh, nomination. Um, and uh, I'm thankful to actually colleagues in many institutions, nationally and internationally, and um, my former graduate students and um, postdocs um, for supporting letters on my behalf. Well, um, I'm also thankful to Miller's Award Committee actually for recognizing my contribution and uh, uh, I, uh, selecting me as the recipient this year. Um, my journey to present started in March 1991 when I received my Bachelor's of Science in Civil and Environmental Engineering from Iran. Given my passion to pursue my academic career in academia, um, I continued my studies towards master's degree, and after several years of practice on various aspects of 
planning, design, management, and construction of large-scale water resources projects. I spent one and a half year term as a Mombusha scholar in Kyoto University in Japan. Then it was in the 20th, on the 20th of August 2000 that I moved to the United States and I started my PhD studies at the University of Arizona, one of the premier institutions in hydrology and water resources. After three years of study and advancing to PhD candidacy, I moved to the University of California, Irvine, due to the move of my academic advisor. And I got my PhD degree in 2000, late 2004. My doctoral dissertation introduced stochastic methods for quantifying uncertainties in hydrologic predictions, a subject that I strongly built during my tenure at Portland State University. I joined PSU in fall 2006, and since then I've developed a research program that casts and grows my technical expertise is regionally, nationally, and internationally significant and complements the mission, growth, and reputation of PSU. <coughs> Knowing that a grand challenge for current and future generations is to promote sustainable management of water resources, I put central emphasis of my research on developing computational methods integrated with remote sensing observations with the goal of improving hydroclimate simulation and forecasting to aid water resources and emergency managers. I'm excited to receive this prestigious award and humbled to have my name added to an amazing list of previous winners. While the honor has come to me, it's a shared award with many people who over the past 11 years at PSU have played a major role in my career. I share this with my inspiring colleagues in the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering, colleagues across the College of Engineering and across PSU, and in particular with my graduate students whose contributions to my success have been indispensable. They, ex they exude enthusiasm for my work and research, and this award is just as much a reflection of their work, support, and dedication as it is mine. Finally, no success in one's career can be achieved without the unconditional support of family. My beautiful five, wife of 19 years, Homa, who has done so much that words cannot express my gratitude. Our two wonderful kids, Amethyst and Rodin, who have been a source of joy and pride for us and now staying at home doing their homework. Thank you so much. <laughs> The George C. Hoffman Award is given annually to a faculty member on tenure track or tenured in recognition of distinguished contributions to the university in instruction, university service, scholarship, which are done in the spirit of humanism, civility, and the collegiality with a particular dedication to students and loyalty to the university. All values that were cherished by George this year, the selection committee felt passionately that two nominees were equally deserving, so we have two recipients of Hoffman Award. I go first to introduce one of the two 2017 George C. Hoffman Awardees, and that is Professor Franz Freud. We have new members of the family, PSU family here, so we should say more about uh, Professor Franz Rod. Professor Franz Rod is a professor of civil and environmental engineering in MCAX. Professor Rod gives 46 years of service to PSU. He was department chair for 22 of the, those long years. He was a significant leader in establishing programs, the department, and even the College of MCAX. 
Professor Rod developed 13 courses, taught 17 in the Civil and Environmental Engineering Department. He secured funding and helped to build many of the fundamental labs, which are still in use today, wrote the proposals for the PhD program, uh, the Civil Engineering PhD program, played a key role in the vision and the funding of the new engineering building, which that uh, we all live today. His commitment to education is demonstrated also by his creation and funding of $75,000 endowed scholarship for civil and environmental engineering students. Professor Rod was the recipient of the first Arthur M. James Professor of Structural Engineering endowed professorship. He elected to He's elected to the Academy of Distinguished Alumni at the University of Texas, Austin, and selected the Engineer of the Year by American Society of Civil Engineers, Oregon Section, in 2002. His work in seismic hazards of building in Portland contributed significantly to building safety in the region and laid a solid foundation for the development of a few statewide earthquake safety policies. Professor Rod's dedication and service record includes seven years on the faculty senate, as well as university and departmental committees. Active scholarship is also a very important part of Professor Rod's distinguished career. He has published over 90 papers in journals, proceedings, and his technical reports. In recognition of his exemplary service and contributions to the university, he is presented with the 2017 George C. Hoffman Award. Please join me in recognition and welcoming Franz Rod to the stage. Thank you very much, uh, Ren. I appreciate that. Uh, yesterday, we had that earthquake in Mexico City. Um, probably uh, four or 500 people, um, that'll be the final count, uh, who will lose their life. Uh, not quite as bad as uh, 22 years ago, in 1985, when we got 5,000 people died. Uh, so uh, I was told that I could give a three-minute speech or thesis. So I thought maybe uh, <clears throat> I can relate this to uh, earthquake engineering a little bit. Uh, over the last um, 47 years, I guess, uh, Portland State University, uh, I uh, have uh, learned that um, the fundamentals of earthquake engineering is really what we have learned in our physics class, uh, you know, maybe in high school or freshman physics class. And uh, that is uh, that when the frequency of the earthquake motion and the so-called natural frequency of the structure coincide or they get pretty close to each other, uh, a state of resonance occurs. And that resonance uh, can have devastating damages uh, to the structure. And we've seen some examples of it in recent years. Um, this kind of resonance should be avoided and we do that in our seismic design. Uh, as a painter and a musician, I've also learned that uh, if you have experiential impetus uh, and your basic uh, natural tendencies uh, coincide, and this could be spiritual or it could be psychological or mental, uh, then you also have a state of resonance, and this is a good resonance because this resonance can actually be creative and it can generate um, exceptional results, artistic results. So we try to avoid the former resonance and we try to uh, adhere to and embrace the latter resonance. Uh, both are resonance uh, functions, but one is good and the other one is bad. I think resonance can also occur uh, between institutions and its people, between a university and its students, uh, its faculty and its staff. 
Uh, and so we try to achieve the good state of resonance and avoid the bad ones as much as possible. Uh, in order to do that, uh, I think we have to uh, have the capacity of understanding the skills to recognize good resonance from bad resonance. And in, in doing so, I think we got to have a good dose of mathematics, physics, science, and uh, maybe engineering. This happens in all engineering fields. But maybe more importantly, I think we also need a good dose of uh, arts and letters, humanities, and social sciences. So, um, as far as me and Portland State University is concerned, I'd like to uh, quote a verse from a song that was one of my, continues to be one of my favorite songs, and it's called Drift Away. Uh, it was written uh, many, many years ago by Mentor Williams, who was an award-winning writer of that song, and you may recognize it. I won't sing it, but I'll say it. It's one of the verses. Beginning to think that I'm wasting time, I don't understand the things that I do. The world outside looks so unkind. I'm counting on you to carry me through. Give me the beat, boys, and free my soul. I want to get lost in your rock and roll and drift away. So to Portland State University, I say thank you for allowing me to get lost in your rock and roll. <laughs> but I'm not drifting away yet. <laughs> And to my wonderful colleagues over the last uh, 47 years, uh, I say thank you. Uh, Danke schön. Merci beaucoup. Sissier. Gracias. Mochakera. Mamdun. And finally, to our new, brand new president, I want to say Khosham Adid. Thank you. recipient of the 2017 George C. Hoffman Award is Wayne Wakeland, Associate Professor of System Science. <laughs> Professor Wayne Wakeland has been a faculty member in the System Science program since 1978. He has received teaching awards both from the Massey College of Engineering and Computer Science and four times from the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. And student evaluations of Professor Wakeland's teaching are consistently high. Professor Wakeland has developed 12 unique graduate courses at Portland State, four collaboratively with faculty and other departments. Five of these courses continue to be offered regularly. Since 2003, Professor Wakeland has established a solid publication record with 83 peer-reviewed papers, an average of nearly six papers per year. Of these papers, 24 lie in the applications area of organizational processes, 16 in biomedical dynamics, 16 in sustainability, 16 in health policy, and 11 regarding simulation and optimization methods. Those of us who know Wayne believe that he never sleeps. He has served as principal investigator or co-principal investigator on 10 grants from government agencies, including the National Institutes of Health and NASA, private foundations, and corporate sources. Dr. Wakeland's infectious enthusiasm permeates his teaching, his research, and his interactions with everyone, especially his students. He enthusiastically explains complex topics in understandable ways so that there is no way not to, be not to be interested in complexity in system science. He is one of the most dedicated faculty to his students, routinely going above and beyond to ensure his students' success. In recognition of his exemplary contributions in instruction, university service, and scholarship, Please join me in congratulating and welcoming Wayne Wakeland to the podium for brief remarks. Well, thank you very much, Karen. Um, I just wanted, first I wanted just to thank my colleagues and students and our alumni and community partners who supported my nomination. They are the reason our jobs can be so rewarding. I'm also 
grateful for a, a new developing partnership between system science and geography, which has helped us to attract highly qualified new PhD students. The primary advisor for two of these students are in geography, and uh, one of them is receiving funding for uh, grants in geography, so it's a really cool thing. We're also uh, considering the idea of a, some sort of a joint faculty search in the future, and we're just kind of in the exploratory stages of that. It is really the energy and enthusiasm of students that keeps me going and eager to come to work every day. And this fall's incoming class is, I think, perhaps the best prepared and broadest yet. And people who know our program, it's very broad to begin with. I just wanted to share with you, I think it's interesting, some of the research areas they are going to come to study, not just with us, but all around the campus. Uh, game theory and the evolution of cooperation, computational methods and machine learning, environmental policy analysis, computer brain interface technology for addressing disabilities, social network modeling and analysis, complexity in political systems, evolutionary algorithms for business analytics and business intelligence, neuroscience and cognition, molecular biology, and complexity in urban systems, and finally, maybe the most interesting to me, the evaluation of social and educational programs. I'm also really enthusiastic about the priorities expressed by Dr. Shreshi, especially related to cross-disciplinary research and education at PSU. And I look forward to continuing working together with all of you across the campus to strengthen our capacity for teaching and research informed by complex systems thinking and the emerging big data science methods applied to urgent topics such as climate change, health policy, bioscience, biotechnology, social ecological systems, and renewable energy. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Marilyn Moody, Dean of the Library. I am pleased to recognize the recipient of the Kenneth W. and Elsie L. W. Butler Award for Library Faculty Service. The Butler Award was established in honor of Professor Emeritus Kenneth W. Butler and his wife, Elsie W. Butler. It recognizes outstanding performance by a member of the university library faculty. The recipient of the 2017 Butler Award is Mary Ellen Kenright, Professor Emerita and former head of library acquisitions. <laughs> Professor Kenright received her Master of Library Science from Kent State University and her Master of Public Administration from Portland State University. Professor Kenreich retired this July after 25 years at PSU. Her leadership in the library included administrative duties, faculty governance, promotion and tenure review, and community service, committee and community service. She served on the faculty senate and on numerous campus committees. She worked behind the scenes with great dedication to ensure that relevant information was made available to library patrons. The Butler Award Selection Committee described Professor Kenright as highly respected and sought after for her professional advice and conduct, unrivaled in her professionalism and work ethic, and the epitome of a service provider. Professor Kenright is unable to attend convocation today, but sends her regards. Please join me in congratulating Mary Ellen Kenright in recognition of her knowledge dedication, and commitment to serving PSU. <laughs> now I'd like to introduce Sukhwant Jha, Vice Provost for Academic Innovation and Student Success to the stage. Thank you, Marilyn. Um, Colleagues, I'd like to introduce to you the winner of the Cumston Award. The Mary H. Cumston Award for Service to Students is given annually to an academic professional or university administrator without academic rank, 
who has demonstrated excellence in the area of service to students. The recipient of the 217, 2017 Comstead Award. <laughs> I am nervous in front of you, it is true. <clears throat> Comstead Award is Becky Ingersoll, Interim Director, Academic and Career Services. Please give her a round of applause. Becky Ingersoll is a Portland State University alumna. For the past decade, she has worked to advance student success initiatives, first in the financial aid office, then in admissions, then to the undergraduate advising and support services, and now in advising and career services. Becky's contributions to students' initiatives include important projects such as the Coordinated Service Network, four-year degree guarantee, excessive credit projects, and the last mile committee. Becky was also involved with five different Rethink PSU initiatives in the past three years. She has served as the floor manager for Portland State University's spring commencement ceremony for past nine years, impacting the experience of over 18,000 students. Becky continues to serve on the academic requirements committee a committee she has dedicated 10 years of service to and remains as one of the most ready and devoted participants reviewing student petitions. Becky also serves on the deadline appeals committee. Anyone who has ever been on that committee knows the quantity of petitions received and looked over. Becky's direct service to students, her leadership in advising, and her engagement with the important student success initiative clearly demonstrates a commitment to serving students and making the systems that support students better. For her compassion, determination, and fearless advocacy for students, please join me in welcoming Becky Ingersoll to the stage for brief remarks. Becky. Well, thank you, Sequant, and I apologize that you have to listen to one more person, and we'll get to the drinks and the beverages and food soon, but um, I've always enjoyed watching award shows and hearing the acceptance speeches, and I've pretty much accepted the fact that I'm not going to have the chance to say I'd like to thank the Academy, my co-stars Meryl Streep, Leonardo DiCaprio, and my husband Ryan Reynolds, but being up here today is just as special to me. You see, I remember when this award was established over a decade ago. Dan Fortmiller was director of our office at the time, and what, before his interim this and that period, and he announced the award to our staff meeting. We were all thrilled. At that time, there were a lot fewer awards, but it felt like a, a turning point to us. Back then, less attention was paid to the amount, to what was happening outside the classroom, and frankly, academic professionals felt underappreciated. So what the Acomston Award did was to validate our work and acknowledge that we play a vital role on this campus, supporting students from admission to graduation and all the stages in between. I knew Mary Cumston, not well, but enough to know that she was fiercely dedicated to students. So I'm humbled to be honored in her name, and I hope that I can live up to her legacy. All those years ago at that random staff meeting that we had, this award seemed like the crowning achievement to me. But I haven't put my heart and soul into this place so that I could be recognized or advance my own career. I've done it because this work is meaningful, and I want students to have the best possible experience while they're here. As Suquant mentioned, I've been very involved in commencement over the past years. And this past spring, in my volunteer role, I was shepherding lost graduates, as, as is sort of my place to be. And I ran into one that I had met as a freshman. I advised both him and his sister before him, and he came to see me every single term, um, which I don't know if that means I'm doing a good job or a bad job, actually. <laughs> but he came to see me even after he had declared his majors. He gave me a big hug and he thanked me and he said, it's because of you that I'm here. And I turned to him and I said, no loss, and it's because of you that I'm here. For me, it's moments like that, connecting with students and seeing them reach their goals. 
That's the real reward to me. So before the music plays me off, it, it, would, it would not be an acceptance speech if I didn't give a few shout outs. So I'd like to thank my ensemble cast and the whole advising and career services community, especially my work sister, Becky Sanchez, who could not be here this evening. But if she were here, I would say, hi, Becky, and she would return, hi, Becky, and then we'd giggle. <laughs> but she nominated me, so I have to thank her specifically. The advising world at PSU has been through so many changes over these past few years, and this year is no different. Change is not easy. Believe me, I know. But if you can hold on to those special moments with students, and remember that we are supporting our students, we're support, we are supporting the student journey, and that we can be part of that transformational experience to them, that, my friends, will be their source of joy. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone. I think you may be expecting that you're going to see Dean Marangel again, but uh, alas, no. <laughs> I'm, going to, you're, I'm going to be the substitute. I'm Steve Percy, the Dean of the College of uh, Urban Public Affairs. And I'm really pleased and jazzed to be up here to, today to talk about awards for our adjunct faculty. Too often, I think we don't give enough appreciation for the people that do uh, join us in, in the capacity of adjunct faculty. And I'm so glad that we are doing this today and can recognize their work. The Adjunct Faculty Award was created to recognize and honor the outstanding contributions of Portland State University's adjunct instructors and researchers. It's my pleasure to announce these two awards this evening. Uh, first award I'd like to give is the Adjunct Excellence Award for Teaching, and it's awarded to Dr. Robert Asadi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This award was submitted by the Department of International and Global Studies with the support of the Department of Political Science. A nominator for the award, Dr. Sean Smallwin, Chair of the Department of International and Global Studies, wrote in his nomina nomination letter that Dr. Asadi's teaching statement demonstrates a reflective and critical teacher who creates opportunities for active learning and small group work. In our program, writing is particularly valued, and he scaffolds writing assignments into his courses so the students go through the multiple stages to creating a final paper. Such scaffolding entails both planning and organization in its most effective way to ensure student success. Dr. Asadi offered the following reflection in his own teaching statement, and he says, one of the most rewarding experiences that I've had so far as a teacher came in the spring 2016 term when I was teaching an upper level grad undergraduate course entitled Theories of Comparative Politics. A significant portion of the student's grade was derived from a 10 to 12 page research paper on a relevant topic of the student's choosing Rather than end the class with students submitting their paper, I decided instead to dedicate the final week of class to a mock student research conference in which each student would give a 10 minute presentation of their research. To assuage the students' uncertainties, I gave an example presentation of a paper that I was working on at the time. We discussed effective presentation strategies in class and I emphasized the importance of posing the question, discussing the evidence, addressing counter arguments and contrary evidence, and clearly identifying the significance of finding and possible uh, avenues for future research. I received an overwhelming pos overwhelmingly positive response from my students about the effectiveness and value of the course. Uh, this experience has reinforced my commitment to designing exercises and activities which enable students to practice for themselves what political sciences do, scientists do in their research. In the conclusion of his nomination letter, Dr. Dr. Smallman states that it's a pleasure to provide my strongest possible recommendation for Dr. Asadi for this award. He is an engaging, hardworking, reflective teacher who has made an important contribution to our department. Let's join and congratulate Dr. Asadi for the award. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, good afternoon. It's a pleasure and a real privilege to be here with you all today. Um, I did just want to underline the fact that this is the inaugural year that this Adjunct uh, Excellence Award has been, uh, has been given in this setting. So I just want to recognize uh, Anna Gray, the PSUFA President, and the entire PSUFA Executive Council for the creation of this award uh, and all of their work on behalf of adjunct faculty here at PSU. 
And I'd also like to uh, extend my gratitude to the university administration um, for their openness in including uh, adjuncts uh, among the Excellence Award recipients. Um, if you would indulge me for just a moment, uh, could you raise your hand if you're adjunct or part-time faculty here today? Okay, I think I saw two hands, two or maybe three. So uh, you may be uh, surprised to find out that adjunct faculty comprise 47% of total instructional faculty here at PSU. Um, that's about 750 faculty members out of the roughly uh, 1,600. Um, so in the year ahead, I'd like to uh, add my voice to this convocation and encourage all of you to please try to get to know the adjuncts in your department, you know, or in other departments. Uh, ask them what their experience has been like teaching at PSU. Um, what are the challenges they confront? What do they hope to achieve in their work? Uh, and I believe that this is one small way that all of us as individuals can help foster a more inclusive environment uh, for all faculty here at PSU. I uh, would just like to mention uh, a few a few people specifically, so uh, Professor Sean Smallman in the Department of International Studies, uh, who has both literally and figuratively uh, opened many doors for me uh, here at PSU. Literally, I mean uh, opening the door for my office as I'm uh, waiting for my key request to be processed, which I'm sure many of you can relate to, uh, and, and figuratively by sharing his professional advice um, and being very generous uh, with his time uh, for me, so thank you very much, Sean. Uh, I would also like to mention the uh, chair of the Department in Political Science, Chris Shortel, uh, who also, uh, I can say, has been very encouraging and available for me uh, in support. Sometimes as an, as an adjunct, you might feel like you're a bit lost at sea, and I think having a department chair who is so open and so available, like I've been very fortunate to have uh, with both Sean and Chris, uh, can be a great anchor. Um, so, so uh, just want to mention that. And uh, lastly, just on a personal note, uh, uh, though she couldn't be here today, I just want to uh, commit to the historical record, so to speak. Uh, you know, as political scientists, we're interested in history, so commit to the historical record. Uh, my deep gratitude um, to my wife, Heather. Uh, it's hard to put into words, uh, but without her, I'm sure I wouldn't be speaking with you all here today. So, merci, Junam. Thank you very much. The second award is for the Adjunct Excellence in Research, and this award goes to Dr. Eric Einsbrook, who is, who is with us today. His nomination was made by Dr. Cheryl Gelman, Professor and Director of the Health Systems and Policy PhD Program in the OHSU PSU School of Public Health, Masami Nishishiba, the Associate Professor and Chair of the Department of Public Administration and Associate Director of the Center for Public Service and the Hatfield School of Government, Dr. Billy Sandberg, Assistant Professor and Director of the, US, the PSU Nonprofit Institute, Philip Kiesling, Director of the PSU Center for Public Service, and myself as Dean. According to the nominators, Dr. Einsbrook truly embodies a community-engaged scholar who is making multiple contributions to PSU. His research collaborations at PSU began in 2002 when he served as co-investigator with Dr. Gelman on an evaluation of Project Metamorphosis, Metamorphosis, a local initiative to serve alcohol, drug, and mental health needs. Dr. Einsbrook not only provided strong evaluation expertise to the project, but also monitored and mentored four graduate students in community-based community evaluation and research. But it doesn't stop there, there's a lot more. Dr. Heinsbrook's CV demonstrates a record of continuing scholarship with evidence of publications generated throughout his consulting career. He's the author of two books on SPSS, which continue to be valuable tools for students and scholars using this well-known statistical software package. His research interests span an array of topics, including mental health services, drug and alcohol programs, youth development, emergency management, and emergency preparedness. He's been leader in the local chapter of OPEN, the Oregon Program Evaluators Network, and the, he's actively involved in the American Evaluation Association. Dr. Einstein plays an active role in the Center for Public Service, contributing to educational and training programs focused on program evaluation and emergency management. More recently, he has served in a key development role, assisting a team of faculty across the campus in developing a new graduate degree in emergency management and community resilience. 
He's also using his evaluation knowledge to support the instruction in the program at the uh, nonprofit institute that's designed to provide evaluation skills to leaders in nonprofit organization. According to his nominators, nominators, Dr. Einsbrook combines his academic training, extensive applied research experience, community engagement, and intellectual curiosity to every project he's worked on. He's a valuable asset to our work, and he well he deeply appreciates we deeply appreciate his involvement and willingness to work across a number of topical domains. His ability to seemingly bridge academe and community-based practice as a role model for our students and our faculty colleagues. In conclusion, we believe that Dr. Einsbrook is truly deserving of the recognition and honor of the Adjunct Faculty Excellence Award for his outstanding contributions to Portland State, our students, and our communities. Please join me in congratulating Dr. Einsbrook. <laughs> Thank you, Dean Percy. In my mind, Portland State University's work to provide educational opportunities that enhance quality of life is essential to our local community and beyond. I am grateful for the opportunity to serve the university in a variety of roles. And for my friends, colleagues, community members here, the people I've worked with at the Department of Public Administration, the Center for Public Service, the Nonprofit Institute, and the School of Public Health. I'd like to recognize one person in particular, Cheryl Gelman, who first asked that I come to PSU and teach as an adjunct. I'm also very grateful to the Confucius Institute at PSU and treasure the experiences that I've had there. I'm deeply honored to receive this award and carry it toward the future. Let's have a great year. Thank you. Dr. Shireshi, I believe it's uh, up to you. So before we close this portion of the convocation, I wanna leave you with two notes. First is that as you start your classes next week, look at every one of those students and think about how you can transform their lives. The second is that so often we forget because we are too busy to think about all of the staff that make a university running so smoothly. So my request to you is as you see a staff in the hallway, on the street, shake their hands and thank them for what they do every day for us. With that, thank you all, and I wish you the best academic year, and let's have some drinks. Thank you.